Good morning, guys. So last week we started the Cold War with Eisenhower. So now we're going to be moving into the 1960s with JFK and Lyndon, John- Lyndon B. Johnson and their time with the Cold War. All right. So the 1960s were a time of uncertainty. Eisenhower's term was coming to an end and the country was in an economic recession. So our economy was down, but it wasn't so down as it was during the Great Depression, which is about 20-ish years ended at this point. The Soviet Union was gaining strength. There was fear that the U.S. was losing the Cold War. Even though the Cold War never, in terms, heated up to full-on conflict, even though we did have conflicts, which you guys will be learning about with later down this unit and with Ms. Wilson next week, that there were some fighting, but it never was directly between the U.S. and the Soviet Union. So in the 1960s, there was election for president, and John F. Kennedy ran versus Richard Nixon, who would later become president down the line. So JFK was running for president. He was a Democrat, and he was a senator from Massachusetts. Nixon was the vice president at the time. And JFK won by a slim margin. And there was two reasons he won, which we're going to get into, was TV debates and civil rights. So at this time, TV, as we learned in our last PowerPoint presentation that I made, was gaining popularity. Remember how it went from like 9% of TVs in homes to 90% of TVs in homes. So the televised debate was incredibly important. So on September 26, 1960, it was the first televised presidential debate ever in history. Well, for the United States, at least. 70 million people watched it. And Nixon agreed because he wanted to expose JFK as an experienced. So up until this point, debates usually took place over radio. And JFK was all for being more connected to the people, and that included the people seeing him, so he was very open with television. And Nixon was a little bit more old-fashioned, but he had experience on his side, and he was the current VP, so he was very confident in his probability to win. JFK had been coached by TV producers, and he looked and sounded better than Nixon. And this started the television age in politics. So during this debate, Kennedy was very confident. He exuded confidence, and he spoke very clearly. And he spoke in like a casual way where the viewers would feel more connected to him. Nixon, however, was suffering from a cold, so he looked very sickly and weak, and he stuttered a little bit. So anyone who watched the TV uh, debate thought that Kennedy for sure won. However, since no one could see his confidence on a radio, anyone who listened via radio thought Nixon had won, even though he stuttered a little bit. He sounded more worldly and more knowledgeable on certain topics, and they thought that he had won. So it was a very divided running race at that point. Another thing that helped JFK win was civil rights. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was arrested in October of 1960. JFK helped MLK get out of jail by sending his brother down there to help him out. This won him the African-American vote, which was a significant number of votes. All right. So when he won the election, his presidency became termed as Camelot. JFK and his wife, Jacqueline, influenced many Americans. Jackie became a fashion icon. And JFK surrounded himself with the best and the brightest advisors. So... Camelot refers to uh, King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table, and everyone was very 
supported of, supportive of JFK and his wife because they were young, they were vibrant, they had kids, and they were living the American dream of making a world a better place. They had they were wealthy, and they seemed average. And a lot of boomers liked that because they were so relatable, but yet so untouchable that it made them mysterious. And that's why a lot of people liked the first couple. So, moving on to JFK's domestic policies, the New Frontier would be his the name for his domestic policy. So, JFK's legislative program, which included proposals to provide medical care for the elderly, to rebuild blatant urban areas, to aid education, to bolster the national defense, to increase national aid, and to expand the space program. So, all these things JFK really wanted to get done, and he was well on his way to doing those things. He had difficulty with Congress agreeing on his plan, and the reason for this was because Kennedy won on such a small margin against Nixon because the country was so divided, Congress didn't have a clear mandate on what the country wanted. So Congress was just kind of trying to shut down Kennedy until they got a clear mandate on what was happening. One of these reasons, oh, I just said that. Look at me. I'm getting ahead of myself, guys. All right, so reviving the economy. JFK had a two-part plan for this. Remember, we were in recession in the 60s. So JFK, one of the big things was coming out of recession, and JFK had a plan for this. All right, JFK convinced Congress to raise the defense budget by 20%, and that was to get rid of the missile gap. So remember, at this time, the Cold War is still happening, and we're having an arms race with the Soviet Union. And we were lagging behind. So by increasing the budget, we could build more missiles, which would take us closer to the Soviet Union. And it would look like we were winning again. And he also proposed major tax cuts. uh, But this did not pass. JFK wanted to put more money in people's pockets. Congress feared an unbalanced budget. So he wanted to increase the defense budget, but wanted to take away money. And the reason for this was because he reasoned that if people had more money in their pockets, they were going to put more money back into the economy, which he isn't wrong, which is one of the reasons that the government sent out stimulus checks during COVID because not everyone was buying things or people were losing their jobs. It was to help people put more money back into the economy so our economy doesn't completely crash. Civil rights. Another big thing. Civil rights are starting to heat up in the 60s. They've been heating up for a while, but the 60s is where you start seeing Martin Luther King and prominent figures like that. So in office, JFK was more cautious about his support. He enforced the laws, but did not create new ones. He also did not repeal any either. He was worried that it would split Congress. This changed in the 1930s with the televised violence used on peaceful protesters in Birmingham, Alabama. JFK attempted to have a civil rights bill passed, but Congress shut it down. The space program was another big thing, and even to this day, movies are made about it, about what JFK did for the space program. So... We have discussed Sputnik 1 and how the U.S. was failing to launch anything into space. JFK contributed to the space program by charging NASA to land a man on the moon and have him return safely. Neil Armstrong was the first man to set foot on the moon. And this was a very big deal because only the USSR could only launch something into orbit they hadn't been able to land anybody on the moon yet, or on a planet for that matter. So we were the first people to put a guy on the moon, and that was a very big deal. Foreign affairs. So you have your domestic affairs, which are important because domestic is here in our country, and they have foreign affairs. So things that are going on outside of our country, like the Cold War. So this was the main focus of JFK's presidency, mainly because of the Cold War. And he stood tough against the Soviet Union. People liked that because Eisenhower had appeared weak to the Soviet Union after the U-2 incident. And JFK was young, vibrant, and strong. 
He supported the policy of flexible response, called for the use of conventional weapons rather than nuclear weapons in the event of war. So it's, he was trying to avoid nuclear fallout, where pretty much if the Soviets launched a, a nuclear missile at us and we would launch one back, that's mad, mutual assured destruction. And so they were trying to find a middle ground where no one used these nuclear weapons and they were just kind of the threatening piece of it all. There was an increase in defense spending as part of the new frontier to help the government grow. We just talked about that, a 20% increase. All right. So while things were going on with the Soviet Union in terms of talking and nuclear weapons, there was also a crisis happening in Berlin. All right. East Berlin was under communist control and West Berlin was under US, UK, and France's control. So after World War II, uh, Germany was split in half between the Allies and the Soviets. And that, that included the country as a whole and their capital city, Berlin. So a city was divided quite literally down the middle. It, by 1961, almost 3 million East Germans had fled to the West because they were trying to escape communism. Khrushchev threatened to block all air and land routes routes to West Berlin, JFK warned against such action. Khrushchev then built the Berlin Wall to separate East and West. This wall prevented any more East Germans from fleeing into the West. And that's kind of very important, not kind of, because the Berlin Wall is a very defining feature of this time, because think about it. You have family that lives in Newark, which is where we live. Imagine if the government decided to build a wall straight down the middle of Newark and half of your family was on one side and the other half was on the other side. You couldn't see your family anymore. And it wasn't like they knocked down buildings. They built the wall like right through the buildings. And it wasn't just like a nice brick wall with a nice gate. No, it was a brick wall had turrets where soldiers would stand with guns and there was barbed wire along the top of it. So it was impossible to cross. And if you tried to cross, you were probably killed. All right. So a hotline was set up between Khrushchev and JFK, which allowed them to talk directly when in, when in crisis mode. So it was getting so bad that instead of going through ambassadors, they're like, well, let's just set up this hotline so that no matter what time of day, or where we pick it up and you're on the other side. So this was monitored 24-7 a day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. JFK and Khrushchev also agreed to limit test ban treaty, which barred nuclear testing, so that was going to slow down nuclear weapon production. That is the end of that. Tomorrow, you guys will be moving on to the Cuban Missile Crisis, which on top of Berlin is another defining moment for JFK and his presidency. Make sure to check back tomorrow for your assignment. Also, do not forget to fill out the Google Sheet that goes with this presentation. Have a great day. If you have any questions, send me an email, send me a remind text. Bye-bye.